Alrighty. Okay. Thank you, God, for this day. How awesome it is to have these young people here. Thank you for bringing us new students, new um, fellows in Messiah Yeshua to be able to learn together. I thank you for the time you've given us, and um, I just praise you for each one of their lives. I'm humbled and honored to be able to impart some of this beauty um, from your given language um, for us um, to learn the Bible in. Um, one of them, and I just pray that even one little thing can deeply take root in their lives today um, that they can remember for years to come and say, oh, I remember that one day, and that meant something to me. This I pray in Yeshua's name, Amen. And then we'll start with the bracha, or blessing, for learning the Hebrew letters. So y'all can just listen or follow along so we we say it in in english first so it's blessed is the one, blessed is the one who has taught my hand to scribe the letters and then in hebrew baruch, baruch hamila med et yadi le saper et ha otiot all right, I mean. A song, we would do a song next, and we can get back to that too. Then we go through our Aleph Bet. Um, at this point, the boys are, I think, more familiar with Aleph Bet. And as we go through the vocabulary, I challenge them to recognize the letters. So we're still learning Aleph Bet and the vowels right now. We're just beginning to learn to read which is exciting. So, let's see. This, I should give to you, Mom. This is the, this is the handout for today. Actually, I, sh I wish I had more. If she can make copies, they might, they might give me one. Elizabeth, is there some way you can make a copy? I didn't know there would be this many, but they, they can. Write, are you going to write your letters, too? No. No, not yet? Okay. Okay, so, so maybe I don't need it then. Just mostly it would be for writing. Okay, but you can hang on to that. Okay, never mind. All right. Um, I'm running to the bank. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, you guys. Let's let's quiet down a little bit. We're gonna start. So take out your take out your lesson. And if y'all were able to pull that up, that's great. We're just gonna start on the lesson. So. It says Hebrew, Omer, and Shavuot learning. This is part one. There will probably be several parts up until Shavuot. Shavuot is known as the Fe Feast of Weeks. You might have heard it be called Pentecost. So that's what we're counting up to, and we're going to learn about that. But I'm going to start with this little quote from Sefer HaChinuch, which is just a Jewish writing. We are commanded to count the days from the morrow of the first day of Pesach, which is Passover, until the day when the Torah was given, which is Shavuot or Pentecost, to demonstrate our great desire towards this exalted day for which our hearts yearn, much like a slave who craves for relief and forever keeps count of the days until the moment of freedom for which he longs. When a person keeps count until a certain day arrives, he demonstrates that in his whole desire and longing, it is to reach that day. So that'll make more sense to you once you understand what the counting of the Omer is and that we will learn about. Over and have Hamatzot. So what does Pesach mean? That was one of our vocabulary words. What was Pesach? Passover. Passover. And what was Hag Hamatzot? Right. So remember I told you Pesach was really just the first two days of Passover and the rest of the week was the Feast of something. What was it? Feast of Unleavened Bread. Yes, right. good job. Hag <coughs> Okay, so it was Passover and the Feast of, of Unleavened Bread. So that has ended, but at the, at the end of the first day of Passover, on the second day we began something called Counting the Omer. Um, I can give you that sheet too if I have one. Um, 
but you are, I might need to borrow yours when the time comes. Mm -hmm. But this is what we'll also need. Big lesson for that. Um, so counting the omer is basically, well, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get there. All right. Um, so in fact, the feast we will be learning about is actually the expressed reason God took his people out of bondage in the first place. So what do I mean by that? Didn't God want to relieve the burdens of his people? Wasn't that the reason? Yes, it was. But why else? So we talked about this a little bit, that the very reason God freed his people was to take them somewhere and give them something. <laughs> Go ahead and tell me what it was. The Torah. And where did he take them? Mount Sinai. Okay, so these three feasts are all, actually four if you count the Omer, they're all tied together really. So does anyone like to read out loud? I know you guys don't. Does mom like to read out loud? Okay, do you want to read that scripture for us? This one on here? Yes, so Exodus. Yeah, Exodus 3, no, um, on the Hebrew Omer Learning Part 1 page, yes. If you want to read that, Exodus 3, 10 through 12. Therefore, come now, and I will send you to Pharaoh, so that you may bring my people, the sons of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I, that I should go to Pharaoh, and that I should bring the sons of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with you, and this shall be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God at this mountain. Okay, so even there, we're hearing about what we're going to be learning about. God's saying, when you get here, after I freed you, this is what you're going to do. And the worship on this mountain will be that feast of giving the Torah. So, um, so even at the beginning, before Moses even went back down to Paro, to Pharaoh, God's telling us about this feast we're going to be learning about. And then in Acts 7, from 6 through 7, this is through during um, Stephen's speech to the authorities who had brought him up on false charges of speaking against the Torah. He says, But God spoke to this effect, that his descendants would be aliens in a foreign land and that, that they would be enslaved and mistreated 400 years and whatever nation to which they will be in bondage, I myself will judge, said God. And then he says, and after that, they will come out and serve me in this place. Okay, so where is God speaking to Moshe from? In this scene here. <laughs> Somebody other than Leora. Where is he speaking to Moshe from? Do we know the name of the mountain or the place? Anybody? No. What was it? Say it. Say it. I hear you. I hear you. Mount Sinai? Yes. Okay. So you can write that down on your line. Mount Sinai. God is speaking to Moshe from Mount Sinai. So we're going to look at this word, sne. Say sne with me. Sne. Sne. It's the word bush, and it consists of three Hebrew letters. I wanted you to note that this word is found only in this context here, God speaking to Moshe from the Sine, from the burning bush. And it's only found one other place, which would be when Moshe... So we're going to practice writing these letters. So this is what we usually do. We have the lines for the word. And I'm going to show you the letter, and if you know the letter, you should tell me. So which letter is this? Sameh. And then you would write it on the line. So he said Sameh, which is correct. So Sameh. And we were learning our vowels. What I'll do is I'll put this little symbol here to be any letter, and then I'll put the vowel point underneath. This vowel, do you remember what its name was? Shva. Shva. And for our purposes, as for now, just to keep it simple, because this is how I can comprehend it, Shiva makes what sound for us? It makes no sound. It's a silent. So when you come to it for now, just treat it as like kind of like a pause and, and, a, and you won't add any vowelization. Okay? So we have a Samek with Shiva. And so what sound do we have? 
So basically, we will take our consonant sound with our vowel sound. In this case, it's just the consonant sound, which is what? Right? Looks like an S. Because Samech just makes like an S sound, okay? All right, our next Hebrew letter. Mm -hmm. I heard someone say it. Say it a little louder, please. Nun. 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 Um, and we have another vowel here. Sigol. Sigol, good. See, the boys are getting it. It's exciting. So this vowel is sigol. I'll try and find my vowel sheet for you. I don't, I didn't see it in my stuff. I can bring it next time. I'll have Elizabeth send it or I can post it. Okay, so sigol. And what sound does sigol make by itself? I mean, as the vowel sound. Mm -hmm. Good. Eh. Like a, it's like a little cluster of eh. 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 Se. Go. And I was telling them the cool thing about the vowels is even the name of the vowel gives you the sound of the vowel. So se. Go. Makes eh. So if we have noon, which makes what sound? What sound does noon make by itself? Mm. Mm. And if we have noon with se. Go. What do we then have? Ne. Mm. Yeah. Good. Ne. So I put this little apostrophe kind of for our Shabbat. We have Samek and then our noon sound with our E sound as I'm transliterating this word. And we have hey. Oh, I just gave it to you. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got more words to learn. I gave that one away. Hey. All right. Um, when hey is at the end of the word, what does that mean about the word? What. Um, what does that mean about the word? I'm giving you a hint over here. Mm. When hey is at the end of a word, what kind of a word is it? Feminine. Not feminine, right? So, and also when hey is at the end of the word, what sound does it make? It doesn't uh. make a sound. But oh. otherwise, hey would make what sound? Like an H. Okay, so at the end of the word, it doesn't make a sound. We're still going to put it here just for our purposes so we know that there's a hay there, but this is snet. So say it with me, snet. snet. And this is bush, like the burning bush on Mount Sinai. Okay? Hebrew words have more than one meaning, but this one is so rare that really this is what it means. The bush on that mountain. There's one more, as I said. We could get a little more abstract because it's in a blessing. All right, we're going to go on to the next part. What? Uh Follow through here. What is the name of the mountain where the Sinai is located? Sinai. Sinai. So let's take a look at Sinai now. I'm, wait, don't we have to do this, this little square? Yeah, you should be doing that, yeah. Right. Fill in your letters. Make sure you're going right to left. You're going to practice doing it two times. And Sinai is like the ultra-American pronunciation. We're going to find out the true pronunciation together right now. Okay. So yeah, for, for our Floridian guests, if you, next time I'll try and post it soon, sooner than later, you can print it out and then it's a lot more participatory that way. Okay, um, all right, let's start with the letters for Sinai here. Let's, first one again is which? Sinai. And again, what sound does it make by itself? Like an S. And, uh, and um, this time we have a different vowel. Which vowel is this? Kirik. 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 And so it's like an E or like a lowercase i type ish sound. Kirik. E. So, stomach with that. Hey, Rick, what sound would we have? C. Yep. C. Exactly. Um, 
So this letter is? Yod. 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 Um, what we actually have here is a Kyrick Yod vowel. Okay, so that's really what we have here. Kyrick Yod, Kyrick Yod in and of itself is its own vowel. The only thing that's different is you add a little bit of a Y to the end. So instead of just E, it's E. It's very slight, but you can hear it, okay? So C, and I'm gonna put it here just so we can try and get the pronunciation good. All right, next letter. Again, noon. 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 Okay, with this vowel, another vowel here. Which vowel is this one? Patak. Patak. What sound does patak make? Ah. Ah, and you can hear it once again. Patak says ah. So noon with patak would be what? Na. 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 And now we have Yod. Yod. What sound does Yod make by itself? Yes. It's real small. Yes. So, Sinai is not really very accurate. Sinai. So say Sinai. 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 Yes. <laughs> Something like that. Sinai. Okay, so Sinai. Sinai. Practice writing it twice in your boxes. So Sinai. But what about because there's four? Um, yeah, that's down here. It should be enough. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then what about that one? Okay, yeah, so we're going down here now. Which? So my question was, which Hebrew letters are shared in these two words? Yeah. Okay, so there's Sinai, and then we had Sne, right? Yeah. So which two letters are shared in these two words? Okay. Samach. Samach and which? Noon. Noon. Samach and Noon were the same in both because you'll notice they sound very similar. Sinai, Sne, and we have... Do I put the two yods down there? No. What you want to do is write Sinai in the boxes above where you're writing right now. And then don't put two yods. I'm not sure why you're doing that. If you can see, Leora, look. Samek and Samek are the same in these words. Noon and Noon are the same in these words. That's what you want to write in these two boxes. Samek and Noon? Mm -hmm. So why do you think that the mountain is named Sinai? Sinai. You gotta answer that for me. Why do you think Sinai is called Sinai? Just guess. You put your hand up quickly. Like you put your like finger up quickly. It's pretty pretty self explanatory. What do you think? Why is it Sinai though? Remember we learned Sne and we see Sinai. Why why would it be called that? because the burning bush was on it, right? There's a connection there. That's has a, This is a destined mountain with a destined purpose, and it all started with that revelation from the bush. It's going to grow exponentially when the whole Israelites come there and all the mixed multitude that's with them, and it's not just a bush on the mountain. It's going to be God's presence and fire on the mountain. So it's pretty cool. So we're going to turn to page two. Remember our learning about the importance of root words in Hebrew? I was stressing the fact that Hebrew is written, built upon two, three, sometimes four root words. The root of the word is going to teach you about the essence of the word and also context where they're found. So the word for root is shoresh. Say shoresh with me. Shoresh. Good job. Shoresh is root. To make something plural, depending on the, if it's feminine or masculine, you will add two letters. Um, to make shoresh plural, you're going to 
have a um, yod and a mem. So shorash is singular, shorashim is plural. Shorash is root, shorashim is root. This is something we'll learn about as we get, as we come to it. Plural, feminine, masculine, etc. The point was, I wanted to teach you that the roots teach us a depth of meaning about the word or words built around them. To understand why God took us to Sinai to receive the Torah, we have to know what we are leaving behind. The last time we were together, we went through this um, blessing, I guess you could call it, of kind of characteristics we wanted to rid ourselves of before Passover. And it was really neat. Um, we're past Passover now, but are we a finished product? Nope, we have a journey to the mountain. So that's why we want to understand what we're leaving behind. So I want to look at Exodus 23, 22. It says, but if you truly obey his voice and do all that I say, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. So we're going to learn this word sur, if you could say sur with me. Sur, sur can mean, depending upon the context, to cramp, confine, can mean adversary or assault, to be beset or to besiege, to bind up, to cast down. Um, it can mean distress. It can mean uh, fashion as in to like make something for a negative or positive purpose. It can mean to fortify, enclose, lay siege to, or put up in bags, binding up, right? In a bind, got it secured. Um, it can also mean, so it's, it can mean distress, all right? So tsur is actually the root word of Mitzrayim, which means Egypt in Hebrew. So we have all these definitions at the root of what Egypt is. We want to leave our Egypt places, but to do so, we have to understand what that means even. So let's look at our word, sur, and we're going to check it out. Leora, what's your question? Is it on topic? No, I just rushed it. Yes, you may. That is on topic. Okay. Can I put the three? three. All right, so which letter is this? Zadi. Zadi, good job. And what sound does the look alike mistake there? Does Zadi make? Right? Like a T-S together like in the English word rats at the end. So we have tss. And we have another vowel here. Vav is a consonant. Vav can also be a vowel that makes two different sounds. So here's our vowel. What is his name? Shuluk Vav. Very good. Shuluk Vav. And he makes what sound? Uh, remember it's in the, his, good it's in his name Shu, ru, vav. he says ooh. there are two vowels that make this sound this is the one we're looking at okay first of all i was supposed to write zani here um no wrong line i was supposed to write zani here but it's really small zani Okay, and then Vav, I would write Vav. I want to know what this consonant with this vowel sound would be making here. Say it a little bit louder, because it's correct. Su? Yeah. I'm just going to do the U, but for phonetics, we'll go like that. Su. And then what letter is this? Resh. Resh. So which uh, sound does resh make? <coughs> okay, so our word is sur. Okay, and what does it mean again? We're going to just stick the one definition on it as distress, okay? Distress. All right. We're going to go on to another vocabulary word. Another related Hebrew word 
Matsor can mean any of the following things, depending upon the context. It can mean something hemming in, a mound of besiegers, something your enemies can climb up. Concept. A siege, distress, or fastness to be besieged, a bulwark, bulwark defense, fence, fortress, siege, sound, as in a whole, sorry, stronghold, or tower. Um, did you want to read that next scripture there, Deuteronomy? You read it nice and loud. If you want, I don't mean to pressure you. I just don't have, I usually have participation readers and nobody likes to do that. I can do it. Okay. So yeah. she's reading, sorry for just a second. Deuteronomy 2853, just for the video. Okay. Then you shall eat the offspring of your own body, the flesh of your sons and of your daughters, whom the Lord your God has given you during the siege and the distress by which your enemy will oppress you. Okay, sorry for the freaky, scary verse from the Torah, but it's freaky, scary because we want to give the emphasis of this word. Siege is terrible, it's scary, this is a bad situation we're in, okay? So that's the why I wanted you to see that. Now we're going to practice writing it and learn it, so let's do that. Okay, so we're learning Matsor, but let's learn the letters that it contains first. First letter is which? Mem. Okay, and what sound does Mem make? Mm. Mm. Okay, we have a new vowel. Kamat. Good job. So this is the vowel Kamat. Kamat. What sound does kamats make? Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Kamats. Ah. Uh. Okay, so mem with kamats will make what sound? Ma. Ma. Okay. And we have this letter, which we saw before. Let's see if somebody who didn't answer last time can, can identify it. Which letter is this? Uh. Sadi. Sadi. Okay. And it's this vowel again, which is which? Sheva. Sheva. Okay, so I'm going to ask you to pronounce just this part. It's just a consonant, because remember, shva, we're just going to kind of ignore it and make it be like a pause. Ma. Ma. So what sound does just the study make with shva? Uh. Right? Ma is what we have so far here. Ma. Okay. Ma. Um, we have our, a new vowel. It's our other vav vowel. Yes, Kolum. that's correct. Kolum. We're running out of room. So I'm going to put him by the other one. This is Kolombav. And what sound does he make? Oh. Oh. So for our new people, these boys are probably sick and tired of seeing me do this gesturing. But for the Vavs, I picture a basketball player. Here's our basketball player. Here's our basketball. When you're in a game, if you get a chest pass that gets a little too low, it's a little too hard, it gets in your belly, you go, ooh, right? So that's what he says. If you want the ball, oh, 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 then you want the ball up here to catch it. Oh and ooh, okay? So Vav is our next letter. And we have what sound again? Oh. Okay, and then finally this letter, which is which? Resh. Resh. Okay, so our word is what? Go ahead and try and say it without me. Matsor. Matsor, which means what? It's meant similar to the other, right? Distress, um, siege. siege. And the reason I wanted you to know those two words is because they are the root words of Mitzrayim, which is Egypt. That was the place 
of pressing, of pressure, of oppression, of limitation, of containment, um, binding, imprisonment. So it's pretty beautiful to me. This is not anywhere near the only place that God has crafted these words to show us the root that will expand in greater meaning as we learn other related words. So we have that. And you should have practiced writing it. And then what we'll do is we're just going to practice writing Mitzrayim in your boxes. So I'm going to write that here. Mitzrayim is Egypt. So go ahead and follow along with me. We'll just we'll just identify the letters in their vowels together. Which letter is this? Yeah. And, and this vowel? <laughs> Which vowel is this again? I'm standing in the way, but you should have it in front of you. Kirik. Good. And then we have this letter and this vowel. Tell me what they are. It was Gadi and Shiva. Good. And then we have this letter. Resh. And that vowel. Otak. And this letter. Yod. And then we have a kind of a new letter. Which which letter is this here? Mem Sophie. Mem Sophie. Mem Sophie. There are five Hebrew letters. You guys might already know when they are showing up at the end of a word, they change shape. Guess what? These two letters are the same letters. Do they look the same? Mm -hmm. They don't look the same, but that's because they will sound the same. They mean the same thing. But because that's at the end of our word, Hebrews read from right to left, he's going to change his shape. So that's what that is. And here we have Mitzrayim, which is Egypt. And now we know what it means. We know what the essence of Egypt is. So why did God embed this meaning in the Hebrew word for Egypt, made up of those other related words that we looked at? Why do you think it's important as we define what Egypt, leaving Egypt means? So why do you think God did that? Instead of just throwing Egypt... So in English, you're reading it, right? And you say, oh, they went to Egypt. We know they were enslaved, but what does that really mean to us? It doesn't mean as much as hopefully it does now because we have these Hebrew roots that kind of fleshed out the experience for us. We weren't there. We don't know. But through the words and the definitions and the corresponding context that we can get an idea. So I think that's why God did that and why we should learn Hebrew when we're wanting to understand our Bible deeper. Um, and I think that's also important because this list of definitions and ideas is what we want to leave behind in our life. Any kind of pressing, limitation, where you put yourself down or you just really kind of don't think you can be free of something, that's what we want to leave over this time. And that's just one example of ways we could kind of contemplate what it means to leave Egypt. Because we're out of Egypt now. We, we've been liberated. Passover is behind us, but we've got this walk towards this mountain, and what does it all mean? They weren't ready. We're not ready. There's a refinement process, and that's what we're going to learn about the counting of the Omer. Is Leora with... Really? Yeah, she is. Okay, that's fine. That's yeah, fine. Sure. Okay. Yeah, okay. she loves really good. She <laughs> just wants to come to play with me. <laughs> all right, so there's another scripture there. Do you mind reading that psalm? <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to. Um, but if you do, read it loud, and it'll be Psalm 68, 4 through 8. and his 
fully have the station. God make a home for a lonely be in the weed out of prison prisoners out prison. Daniel, how old are you? I'm six. Wow. Seven. You're a great reader. I'm very impressed. Thank you. Welcome. Elizabeth, how much time do I have? Because we started late. Yeah, it's after three. I, I can stay longer. How long can I have? Okay. All right. Let's, uh, what we'll do. Um, Okay, so we'll just do that then. Uh, we'll just keep going until parents retrieve students. What's that? Um, I believe so. Let me see. Uh, yep, she's still here. Okay, so I gave you that scripture. She's still here. She is lazy. Um, the earth quaked. The heavens also dropped at the presence of God. Sinai itself at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Here we have the psalmist retelling this importance of this event that we're going to study. I wanted you to note when you're reading the Bible and you see italics like this, those words aren't there in the Hebrew. Sometimes it's for you to understand it better. Sometimes it's for uh, man's own reasons. But um, when you're reading your Bible and you see italics, try and just take it out as if it's not even there and read it because it'll be a more accurate thing. Leora, I have a question. I need, a, I need you to uh, help me find my phone, which I think is in the car. Could you go get it for me? I know you hear me. Behind that door. <laughs> uh, constantly. We were at my phone, I believe, I left in the car. I need to text Abba about picking up uh, that, that the kids are getting a ride home. All right, let's keep moving on. So Sinai is an important place. Sinai is an important place. It is where the Torah, which is what? The instructions for holy living for a set-apart people unto Hashem, or the Lord, was given. This is what we celebrate at the Feast of Shavuot. But before we get to Sinai, there's a journey. It's a physical journey out of Egypt, out of Mitzrayim. And it's a spiritual journey of preparation to internalize. That is, as we read in our previous lessons, the New Covenant, which is the Torah, is written upon your heart. That's from Jeremiah 31 and 31. So that we can internalize and deeply experience this feast. This journey is actualized through the commandment of counting the Omer. So that might sound completely foreign to you. I've given you the blessing, though. Today is day 12. Tonight, if you would like to do this blessing, and you might not want to this week, but maybe by next week, as we learn a little bit more about it, you might say, that's something I want to do. You say the blessing, and you count the day. So tonight, if you did want to jump in, and if you want to get online and Google more about it, tonight would be 13, and so on and so forth. And that was the homework for you guys, was to read that night's sentence, write it out, 
and we'll read it together next week. So this whole idea comes from Leviticus 23 from 15 through 16. You shall also count for yourselves from the day after the Sabbath, that is the rest day of the first day of Pesach, because that's a Sabbath, from the day when you brought the sheaf, that's the word omer, of the wave offering, so that next day after the Passover lambs had been sacrificed, partaken of by the people, the next day they would come to the temple and they would bring this barley offering. Can you look through my stuff? I don't know. Just like, I got my coffee. Yeah. You threw it at my coffee, and it's not just Bari. Go get, go get a towel now. That's more important now. Right now. Paper towel from the bathroom. Watch what you're doing. Okay, sheaf. They bring the offering of barley. It's the first crop to ripen. And then at Shavuot time, that's when the wheat ripens. And that's a whole nother thing. So there should be seven complete Sabbaths. I'm continuing on verse 16. It says, you shall count 50 days after the day, sorry, the day, to the day after the seventh Sabbath. So we're counting seven sevens, seven weeks. Seven is very important in biblical concept. This, uh, sorry, then you shall present a new grain offering to the Lord. So we're gonna learn much more about this next week, but let's just squeeze in hopefully two more Hebrew words having to do with counting the Omer and we'll begin to learn the blessing, which we won't have time for, but at least I can probably sing it or read it to you. So let's do these next two vocab words. And then remember, your homework is that sentence for number 13 and the quiz, to start going over the quiz. Okay. Emma, I can't find it. It can't just disappear. Or maybe it can. All right, which letter is this? Uh, iron. Good. And what sound does iron make by itself? Uh, I? It makes no sound. Remember, this is a silent letter without vowels. He doesn't make a sound. But he does have a vowel. Here's another one. Which one is it? Mm -hmm. Dot above the letter. What's the name of the spell? Holon. Holon. And what sound does he make? O. Oh. Okay, so what sound do we have so far? O. Oh. O. Oh. Okay, and this letter? Mem. Mem. And a new, did, did we do this one yet? Yeah, we did. And this vowel is? Segol. Segol. So mem with segol would be what? I think I heard it. Meh. Meh. And then with our rish. Get away. I gave you it. Sorry. It was rish and I just said it. Omer. Omer is sheaf. Very technically, it's sheaf. It's also a measure of grain. Okay. So an omer of wheat, an omer of barley. Hi, we're running over a little today. Who are you picking up? Ben. Okay. <coughs> I have to take it. Uh, Evie's got to get to work, so I can't wait. <laughs> Sorry. No, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm already taking him. It's really like gotta be in the car. Motivate. He's gone. He's not here. We're talking to nobody. <laughs> oh, you are here. <laughs> Think about what would motivate you. I heard you singing. We could like save up for a concert and go like to a Christian concert in Tucson. That might be fun. Really? Hmm. I'll have to brainstorm something that would tie into that. Okay. <laughs> All right. One last word. Let's do it. Um. So, oops, I did not put the correct Hebrew word in there. So you guys are going to have to edit this for me, okay? It is. I messed it up. Let's see. I got to fix that on the blog, too. 
So the word we're actually going to look at is safar. So you're going to have to, what do you think it starts with? I think it starts with the uh, Yep. <laughs> yeah, I, so, uh, that's, I knew what I was trying to yeah, say. Yeah, I knew you did too. So, so edit this out oh, for me. This, that it? yeah. So it's yeah. Uh, what is what is yeah, yeah. Samana. 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 Okay, and it has. I need to write it down for myself. Patach and Kamats and Patach. Okay, so we have Kamats below it. So what sound will those two make together? Uh -huh. With the samek would be what? Sa. Sa. And then we have um, this letter, which is which? Fe. Yes, very good. This is fe. If we have this letter with a dagef in the middle, what what is the name of the letter? Instead of